Hello class. Here we're going to look at an example with 2D motion from a net force where we've got two masses hanging over a pulley but we've got the added complexity here that one of them is on an inclined plane. The question says two boxes are connected by a string passing over a pulley. The incline makes an angle of 35.7 degrees with the horizontal and the masses of the boxes are M1 equal to 5.12 kilograms and M2 equal to 3.22 kilograms. Neglect friction and the rotational motion of the pulley. If the boxes start from rest, will box 1 slide up or down the incline? And what are the magnitudes of the acceleration of the boxes and the tension in the string? Okay. Let's take inventory. What have we got? We've got mass 1 here on this side is 5.12 kilograms. And it's heavier than the mass over here, mass 2, equal to 3.22 kilograms. So if it wasn't on an inclined plane, we'd know which way it would go. However, the inclined plane might help because it will support some of the force of gravity or some of the weight of box 1. We've got gravity acting downward on box 2, tension acting upward, and on the other side we've got the tension pulling it upward. We've got a normal force acting like in that direction, normal or perpendicular to the surface, and we've got gravity again acting downwards, straight downwards. Let's look at those on our free body diagrams. One of the first things to recognize is that we can have a coordinate system for each of our objects and that for the inclined plane, let's make that coordinate system easier by tilting it so that it matches the inclined plane. So let's take what is normally a positive x-axis and let's tilt it upward by 35.7 degrees so that this now becomes our positive x-axis. We're tilting the y-axis over so that this becomes our positive y-axis. And you'll notice on the bottom then we're tilting it. We're tilting it over so that this becomes our y-axis here. And I point that out because we're going to need this angle as well. So the whole thing rotates by 35.7 degrees to match. For the free body diagram then, let's draw our forces now. We've got a tension acting along the positive x-axis. So this is our tension. We've got a normal force acting perpendicular. That's the normal force. It's perpendicular to the surface, so it's perpendicular there. And we've got gravity acting straight down. And so gravity, now, we can break that down into two components. A component that is in the x-direction and a component that is in the y-direction. And so for the y direction, we've got FGY, FG1Y is then FG1 cos theta in this case, because it's adjacent to the theta of 35.7. I'm going to substitute in here that that's M1G cos theta. And down here, we have FG1X, which is then FG1 sine theta because it's opposite opposite of the angle, so m1g sine theta. Let's stop for a minute though because we want to get our signage in here. We've defined what the positive x-axis is and so both the tension and the normal force are positive but our gravity then is negative and so we'll have a negative there as well and for the x we also have a negative here, a negative and a negative value here. So both of those are in the negative direction, a negative y and a negative x direction. At this point, I also want to define what would be a positive acceleration then. If this is my positive x-axis, then I'm going to define this as a positive acceleration. It'll be in x direction, but the acceleration there in the x direction will be the same as in the y direction over here. So my positive AY is equal to a positive A, where those A's are the same. And I'm defining that as my positive direction, so with the pulley moving this way. And I want them to be consistent so that churning in one direction gives them both a positive acceleration, 
That makes it easier, but it might actually go in the opposite direction. That's fine. It'll tell me that later based on the sign that comes out. Let's look at the free body diagram then for mass two. I've only got two forces here. I've got the upward tension because I've defined positive downward for the acceleration. That means this is my positive y. And so this is going to be a negative t. And I've got the acceleration due to gravity acting downward, fg2. And this is going to be positive fg2 in terms of a magnitude. So this is my vector. I've given it a sign and I've given it a magnitude. And that's all I need for that one. Let's look at the equations that will come out of that. Over here, if I look at the sum of my fy's, I've got fn, which is positive, acting upward. And in the down direction, negative, I've got an fg, 1y. And I can let them equal to my ma for Newton's, from ne Newton's second law. But they're in equilibrium. There's no acceleration in that direction. And so, in fact, this is zero. That tells me then that fn is equal to not mg, but in this case, mg cos theta. So I've got the normal force equal to m1g cos theta from that equation. In my x direction, then I have a positive t for the tension, and I've got a component of the gravity, negative fg1x, and that's going to be equal to my acceleration in that direction. And I said I'm going to define that as simply a. And so I have this expression then, the tension minus m1g sine theta, is equal to m1a, or the tension is equal to m1a plus m1g sine theta. So the tension is increased by the acceleration, if that's my positive direction, but it's not the full weight, it's only a portion of the weight, mg sine theta. Lastly, I'm going to look at the equations that come out from the free body diagram on the right, so for mass number two. My y components, because I have no x components, I'm left with a negative t, positive fg2, and that is going to be equal to my mass and my acceleration on the right, which is a symbol a for the way I've defined it up above. And so again, solving for the tension, tension will be less than the weight, again, if I have a positive acceleration here, if I've picked the right direction. And I have two expressions now for the tension. This one here, from the mass on the right, mass two on the right, and this one here for mass one on the left. And I'm gonna use those two expressions to eliminate the tension, and then I can go ahead and look at the acceleration and come back and solve for the tension afterward. You'll notice that I haven't done much with this equation over on the left, where I'm dealing with the normal force. is not needed because there's no friction in this problem. If there was friction, I'd need to know what that normal force is in order to figure out what the friction is going, how much friction, no force there is there. Taking from the page up above, I can now take those two expressions for the tension and I'm gonna put them together. I'm gonna to collect my acceleration terms on the left and everything else on the right. And so you'll notice on the left, I've got the acceleration times the total mass. So the force on the right is the net force that causes the acceleration of both masses on the left. Let's divide both sides by that total mass. So we get rid of it on the left side, and then we'll be able to simply plug things in and solve. And so we've got an acceleration of 0 0.274 meters per second squared so question A asked us about the direction. So mass one will slide up the incline. Two, we're asked about the acceleration. We've got a positive 0 0.274 using three significant digits, meters per second squared. And part C asks us for the tension. So we can go back and use one of those tension equations. In other words, a positive 30.7 newtons now this is for the magnitude, and if we look back, that means that we'll have a that means we'll have a tension upwards on the right of that 30.7 newtons, and over on the left we'll have it up the incline at 30.7 newtons. Key things to notice is again we chose 
a particular acceleration direction. And we made that consistent for both sides, choosing our positive acceleration to match those. We'll notice that a smaller mass is able to pull a larger mass up the incline because part of that weight is being supported here by the normal force. And we only have part of the weight, then, the x component that we need to actually pull up the incline. And in fact, if you go and look at the values, you'll find that this one is a 29.3 newtons, and this value over here is a positive 31.6 newtons. And given that there's no friction, that alone would have told us that we would have a positive acceleration or an acceleration in this clockwise direction. Another thing is that we pointed out we never really needed this um, normal force because there's no friction calculation and we'll see when we do friction we will need that one. So I've still gone ahead and shown it here and so by equating the two tensions we can then go ahead and eliminate the tension variable, solve for the acceleration and then we can go back and solve for our tension using one of those pre previous equations.